and welcome to another exciting episode of Weekly Entertainment. I am your host, and I'm back in your living room, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, here it is. It is December 12, 12, 12. This is really cool because this is the last time in any of our lifetimes where we're going to see another date like this. And, uh, you know, I just learned that I guess people all, ac all across the world, actually, are all getting married today. Uh, people are scrambling to, uh, to, you know, reserve this date to get married, and uh, that's, a, that's a really cool thing. Uh, you know, um, you have your doomsday sayers and, and all that, but it uh, looks like it turned out to be a really positive thing. The only negative thing is, um, unless you consider getting married a uh, doomsday scenario, which I do personally. Um, so yeah, but uh, as you can probably already tell right off the bat, um, I've lost my voice. So um, just try to bear with me here and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if I can get through this. But um, Hey, welcome to another week of uh, broadcast journalism and uh, madcap mayhem. Um, let's see, what do we have? Oh, here, here's some, uh, some tech news. Um, this is uh, for all you geeks out there like me. I know, uh, you know we, every week we uh, try to bring you some cool geek-related news, but uh, this is, uh, is science-y. Uh, Nefertiti, the, first, the very first space spider, the spider knot, as they call it, uh, was brought back from the International, uh, the International Space Station where, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, he died. Uh, yeah, Nefertiti, I guess that's a female name, so she. Um, and she was 10 months old and uh, spent 100 days in the uh, space station for an experiment on uh, how spiders can live in space, which is, you know, that's it's, it's, it's actually pretty cool, you know? I don't know how useful it is, but it's cool nonetheless. But uh, yeah, they, br they brought it back down and uh, brought it to Washington, D.C. at the Smithsonian Institute, where um, upon learning that uh, Obama was reelected, it killed itself. So sad news, sad news. But um, OK, hey, uh, if you're watching this, it's Christmas. So I'd like to wish everyone a, a warm Merry Christmas to everyone. And um, if, if you're watching this show on Christmas, then you're, you probably have no life or no family. So welcome to the club. Welcome to my world. Um, but uh, my mom wanted me to show these, so I have some, some childhood photos. If we could show number one. There, look at that. But one thing I want to point out, look in the upper left-hand corner, the creepy chicken creature. What is that? Um, is there such a thing as a Christmas chicken? But that's adorable. No wonder why I'm so freaked out. And I'm sure that Santa Claus is long dead, too. So uh, yeah, let's, let's see number two. OK, there we go. Yeah, that's, that's cute. I look like I'm about six there. So, uh, yeah, see, Mom, I'm sure, yeah, you wanted to see these. And uh, here we go. Now let's move on to number three. Look at that. You, know, you just finished opening my presents, just, you know, as happy as can be. And, uh, you know, I wish I would have left most of those presents in the box because I'd be a very rich man now. So, uh, all right, we have a great show for you today. Um, we have author Carol T. Garten on the show. Um, she's going to be uh, promoting her new book, and she's got a book signing coming off. So, uh, Stay tuned, and we'll get right into that. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Hello, everybody, and it is the week of December 25th, so just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas from Weekly Entertainment. And we got uh, one major event happening this week. I want to get to you guys. Yeah, on the 29th of the, this week, on December 29th, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra is coming to the Palace of Auburn Hills. It's on the 29th. For dates, for times, go to the Palace's website, and uh, it's palacenight.com, and or you can probably go to ticketmaster.com to find out more information there, too. It's basically um, the only major event that's uh, going to be happening over this uh, week. Uh, the last uh, Christmas service at Kensington was last uh, uh, on the Monday. So, had a lot of fun with 15 services. Uh, we'll be doing it next year as well, hopefully. Or at least I'm thinking about doing that. Um, once again, it's uh, Christmas week. You're on weekly entertainment, and we'll see. I'll uh, see you guys next week. Oh, and also, 
that uh, memory thing we're going to kick into in next month as well. So probably near the end of next month or beginning of February, we will be uh, um, finishing the memory videos and getting them started. They'll start um, back up next week and uh, probably by the end of next month we will be uh, doing the award kind of thing on the show where we go and uh, like two weeks ago and do the uh, best moment of the year even though we'll be into next year already um, we're still going to do it as well and uh, we're at our 25th episode as you probably know by now thought would you say that uh, the 25th episode and uh, the week of the 25th of December, so that's pretty uh, strange, isn't it? Well, let's see you in the next video, which will be, I believe, next week. So, see you then. Bye. Alright, and welcome back for another uh, week of Mad Cat Mayhem and broadcast journalism. Um, we have a very special show for you today. Um, I'd like to give a big, huge, warm, fuzzy... Weekly Entertainment, welcome to author Carol Teagarten. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me here. Oh, it's a pleasure. You know, I, I've had authors on the show before, um, but not as lovely as you, I have oh, to say. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what do you have for us? Uh, well, I wrote a book. Okay. And it's called, uh, it's entitled Strawberry, How Strawberry. an Exotic Dancer Toppled Detroit's Hip Hop Mayor. Oh, wow. And it's actually about okay. um, Kwame Kilpatrick and his... Uh, dalliances with women and uh, yeah. uh, the different things that he did his problem with uh, Christine Beatty and the court case and and the whole thing that went on in the early 2000s even after he was reelected right, he right. began <laughs> having so many problems and um, and I, I'm actually working on I wrote the book last year and I'm working on a screenplay now oh really so I'm hoping okay. to have some um, luck with getting that produced I don't know how oh, that would happen luck. I mean it's you know kind of a long shot but I figured somebody might want to write a somebody might want to do a movie at some point oh, um, sure. based on this book and so now I've got the screenplay ready if anybody you know comes to me and asks about it and uh, I actually did work with somebody last year on a screenplay but that fell through because oh. they wanted to portray Tammy the, the, the lead character in my book who's a real person is as a, not a very savory character, uh -huh. and I backed out. And I thought, well, this guy can do a screenplay, he, and I, I might, you know, I can do it myself. So mm. it could be a stage production, it could be, you know, an actual screenplay itself, but it's really based on the mayor, and what he, and that, the whole, it's a, a true story, you know, and oh, sure, it's still absolutely. going on. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. as a matter of fact, he was in court, um, I think about a week ago, he was, uh, one of his so-called investors, uh, was in court and they were grilling him about uh, oh, yeah. flying him around in his private uh, corporate jet and uh, all the all the really lavish gifts you know he uh -huh. would buy Kwame you know a five thousand dollar watch here and there or buy his wife uh, well, the you Vegas know. trips alone yeah you know, oh yeah yeah the, thirteen fourteen thousand dollars exactly trips, yeah at least and. Um, he would fly in Carlita, his wife, to one area of the hotel, I <laughs> imagine, and then there would be other things going on. I'm not going to oh, be really? specific, really? He but would, he would, in so different parts of the hotel. But he would get gentlemen's facials. and um, I mean, this is all record. You know, it's all right, record. Absolutely. He would get trips back and forth. You know, the only thing um, that I think in, in defense of maybe some of this is that others had done this. Um, well, sure, I'm yeah. not sure to this extent. But it was sort of common procedure, and and this was a kid that grew up in Detroit mm -hmm. that uh, went to I think he went to public schools. His mother was a politician. His father was a politician. He was entitled, even even though he so he had the, like this mixed upbringing, you know, where he was kind of a kid from the hood in some respects. Mm -hmm. You know, he was hanging out with kids and gangs in in the areas that he lived in. High, high upper echelon type gangs, but he was with them. Oh, wow. and he was getting arrested, and this stuff was going on from the time he was a child, mm -hmm. you know, or a young young boy. And then he grew up into this entitlement, and he hadn't ever developed his ethics. So I ah. compare him to maybe a Kobe Bryant or or a, a ball player or somebody that got rich really fast, got famous really fast, and didn't have the basics. You know, I see. and yeah. uh, didn't have the understanding of what it takes to be a, a good moral person. 
and wasn't taught that and it wow. translated into his lifestyle as a politician and it really ruined Detroit. It, it, yes, it did. You know, his moral ethics are, are what I really devote the screenplay to. Hmm. You know, and I think he's made some changes, but I don't know. I was probably, he's probably going to spend some time in jail and um, having to deal with that. But I think it seems to me he's made some, some changes, and that's my hope. I, I hope nobody, I hope some, there's a, a, a you know, silver lining at some part. Of course. Right? Well, of course, they could also be mm. superficial changes, too, you know, just for the press. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make myself, you know, look like I'm a... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to play the victim, and mm -hmm. uh, you know I've, I've had such a hard life. I don't know if it's a victim that uh, I see as a change. I think that he's he's turned to um, God in in a good way, and uh, I think, <clears throat> although I'm not all about that, I think that he has maybe made some changes with his family life and, I sure and hope so. stuff like. But maybe it's forced changes. I yeah. don't know. Like, you know, and who knows what would happen again? But if he, if he did make a change, if all this terrible stuff happened and the stuff that they did that's coming out day after day in court happened if it did we don't know for sure they still have to make a judgment of the course. jury has to decide oh, yeah. but if that was true and young people are watching this and they're thinking wow look at look at this horrible example but if he turns out in the end to make something out of himself to maybe be a speaker at the end of the day you know sure. and talk about this and talk about greed and what motivated him and why he made a change then that can help people Mm -hmm. to say, mm, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take that payoff. Right, know? right, right. So, I don't know. Well, you can kind of see where greed would uh, easily come into play there. I mean, because, you're, you know, you're, you're in this position of power, mm -hmm. and on top of it, you're receiving all these gifts and all these uh, extra benefits, and I could see where, where it could kind of... Um, you could be, uh, you know, perverted or corrupted in, into right. that into that lifestyle. You can, I, I, it yeah. could probably happen fairly easily too. I, mean, um, I don't think it's unique to Kwame oh. Kilpatrick. I mean, there's a lot of oh no, a lot yeah, of it going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, there's just, a lot of it going on. You know, it's going on. It's going on right now, and in the legislature in Michigan. I mean, people are getting paid off to to vote a certain way. Yes, and, unfortunately. And uh, so they, you can't point your finger. You know, um, it's somebody unless right. <laughs> you're yeah, pretty you really clean, can't. and I don't think a lot of people are clean enough to point their finger and say, "Oh, you know, he's an awful guy and he's terrible, and I would never do anything like that." You know, a lot of them have. Sure. I even think Snyder has taken a payoff to make this to do the certain, the, you know, to do the right to work vote. And yeah. I don't. I think the Koch brothers paid him off. Oh, you think I, so? You know, yeah. So um, I think it's on every level. Um, you know, I'm. So I think Kwame Kilpatrick is just an example yeah. of, of this yeah. greed, you know, the type of greed that uh, is, is rampant. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's ever going to change either. No. Um, it will change if, like I'm saying, if people can see through this and see that, that maybe um, this is what happens. These guys are going to jail, like the... Uh, the governor of Chicago, right? Mm. He went. Is, he went to jail uh, for for corruption, greed, and corruption. I believe so. Yeah. 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 So um, people are being hauled off to jail. You know, the the, the next mayor isn't going to do that. You know, I don't know. Did it ruin Detroit in the meantime? I Wh think. What do you think of the Detroit City Council? I think it's a mess. Yeah. I think that they are soon to be gone. I think we're going to have. Good. Really, you do? Yeah, I do. I, I think that whole government is going to have to change. Although I don't believe in emergency manager, I don't know what else okay. can be done. But I think that they, they've they've held back the renovation of Belle Isle. <laughs> you know, I mean, how can you hold back the renovation and vote you, against that? You would that? think you'd want a nice yeah. like attraction uh -huh. for, for the downtown area. I mean, yeah. except for Greek Town and the casinos, what do we really have? Right, right. Um, and I, the I casinos are thing. losing money. Yeah, yeah, they are. Because yeah. of the new, um, I think it's Hollywood Casino or something. It's in Toledo, and that's oh, taking yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, business. So it's really tough to to um, to run a city, I think, and especially these days. Look at Benton Harbor, and uh, the, but it's been proven that the emergency manager process doesn't work either. Ah. So I don't know, maybe it'll have to go green. Maybe we'll have to do urban farming to make Detroit I, th I think that would be a wonderful and idea. Come back again. The downtown is okay. I drove downtown last night. Sometimes I just drive around to see mm. how it's doing and it looks beautiful. But then you go into the suburbs and it's just yeah. detonated. It's it looks like Beirut, It you does. Know? It, absolutely. Um 
We only have a minute left in this oh segment. Oh my God. Uh, yes, where does the time go? <laughs> so I take it you do not support uh, Snyder's right to work no. legislation? No, in okay. fact, I went to Lansing yesterday. Oh, you did? Yesterday okay, we'll have to talk more about that after mm, uh, this I segment. Did. But, uh, and um, I wish I could write politically. Uh, I don't. I don't write that. You know, mm -hmm. it's just. The, but I would if I could. I heard I things kind of turn ugly down there. Well, I was right by the tent where they, yes, the tent they, they tore down, down the tent. Yep, and yep. from what I understand, the tent was torn. They were there's a tent there with the Americans for Prosperity group, and they're right. funded by the Koch brothers, and yep. they come in and they were trying to t antagonize the strikers. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know yeah, the basically. auto workers, union guys, and hard hats, and uh, apparently they said that the Americans for Prosperity said that the, the union workers were tearing down their tent, but somebody that I talked to said that they began tearing it down themselves to incite some sort of oh, a problem. Oh, okay. To make it Is look like the union workers were doing that. So that the cops came in and tear gassed the yeah, union workers. Yeah. I didn't get any, I mean, I was there after it happened, so I didn't, you know, wasn't involved in any of that stuff. But later, ten, I saw this woman dancing around the Capitol steps and 10 minutes later she was on TV she'd been tear gassed so she was right by where I was so I don't know what happened I think it happens in isolated pockets you know well we're gonna have to take mm. a break so we'll be back in just a minute okay <coughs> well we're all off subject <coughs> on my oh. book <laughs> hi everyone uh, this is Xander the Conqueror um, sorry, I'm a little bit hoarse this week. <coughs> I actually just ate a horse, and uh, it's kind of uh, scratched my throat up a little bit. But anyways, um, I'd like to just welcome, uh, wish everyone a very, very warm weekly entertainment Christmas blessing to all of you. Um, unless you celebrate Hanukkah, then too bad for you. But um, okay, um, I'm going to sing a couple carols for you. How's that? <coughs> Um, it's the holiday season, holiday season, and Santa Claus is coming to town, and he's going to bring you lots of, um, yeah, um, let's see, away in a manger, the baby Jesus hangs out. Um, sorry, I don't know these uh, Earth uh, Christmas carol customs. Um, uh, um, uh, let's see, uh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Um, something about Batman and Robin. Um, 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 da na 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 to hang up your sock. Um, yeah, is everyone joining along here? Um, about exactly at 12 o'clock, he'll be coming down the chimney down. Okay, uh, wow. Um, okay, uh, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Um, um, how's, how's that go? Um, Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Um, be sure to wear your radiation suit when I nuke your site from orbit because that's the only way to be sure. And um, yeah, uh, what other Christmas songs are there? Um, 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 yeah, I've had a little bit too much eggnog, can you tell? Um, well, let's see. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> A uh, dreidel, 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 I made you out of clay, and when you're dry and ready, then dreidel I will play, yay! Um, okay, that's, that's a good one. Um, um, let's see, uh... <laughs> oh, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad. Oh, thank you, Feliz Navidad. Um, something, 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 Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navi. <laughs> oh, okay, well, it uh, looks like that's uh, all the time we have left. I hope you enjoyed my Christmas carols, um, and I hope you all joined along and you're having a good time with your families. Um, I know I will. Um, well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Okay, thank you, uh, Xander, for that. Um, okay, we're back with our special guest, uh, author Carol Teagarden. Welcome back. Thank um, you. 
So why don't you tell us about uh, some of the other things you've done? I guess you were a gossip columnist? Yes, I was a gossip columnist at the Detroit News and Free Press from, so, oh God, this goes back a ways, from like 80 to 86. Oh, wow. And um, I had cool. some fun years, you know, running around, doing parties, going to all kinds of events in Detroit. I met Coleman Young and I met um, all kinds of Bill Cosby. I interviewed oh, wow. him. I interviewed so many interesting people. And um, then I quit in 99 to be a teacher. So oh, I taught I for a couple of years and then I decided to, then I wanted to write books. So I quit and jumped off the cliff and wrote this book, Strawberry, <laughs> How an Exotic Dancer Top of Detroit's Hip Hop Mayor. And I've, it's been out a year. It's about Kwame Kilpatrick and the exotic dancer Strawberry who was murdered in 2003. And there's a connection, even if there isn't an actual connection people in Detroit think there's a connection. So one way or another, there's a connection between this dancer and Kwame Kilpatrick because she supposedly danced at a, at a, at a bachelor right, party right. that he had at the Manoogian Mansion. And she was supposedly, allegedly uh, assaulted there. And um, it's been in the newspaper, it was in the newspapers back then. And then there was an investigation and some of the policemen were fired and there was a huge whistleblower lawsuit. and. Um, Gary Brown, who's on the Detroit Council now, and uh, a couple of others won six million dollars out of the deal, wow. which was very controversial at the time. But they won that kind of money. Mm. And then right after that, the text message uh, uh, thing came out between Christine Beatty and uh, Kwame Kilpatrick, and those two went to jail. Um, so it was quite an explosive time, and nobody wrote about it. There was nothing about this in a book form. It was in all the papers. And uh, it was even nationally, oh, you sure, know, yeah. publicized. But nobody had written a that. book, and I thought nobody's written a book. I want to, and everybody said you're crazy. <laughs> and I uh, went out to find. Uh, I wanted to really focus on um, Tamara Green, Strawberry. I wanted to really okay. focus on her life and how she became involved in all this, and um, you know what happened, who killed her, um, why. Uh, and of course, I didn't get to the answer. Nobody right, has. Right. That's, that trial is still. May, may end up going to appeals court. Um, but um, I, it really didn't matter it, in the end who did it. Mm -hmm. it. What mattered is that two young people, Kwame Kilpatrick, who was in his 30s at the time, and Tamara Green, who was in her late 20s, she mm -hmm. died uh, because of this and because of whatever it was that happened uh, that was related to his his office. I, I don't know if it was anybody in, involved in the, in the in his administration, there's all this rumor and all this innuendo, which I would have had a great time with if I was a gossip columnist, but I'm not, That's so right. I have to stick with facts. And they've never uh, discovered any evidence that linked the mayor to her death oh, or really? even to her, you know, to it was her just at the all. Fact that she was at the party uh -huh. in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, and so, but there has been evidence uh, linking p her possible uh, cohorts and people that she was running with at the time to her oh, death. I um, see. So, I'm not sure what you know what really happened. It's almost like that movie, The Black Dahlia, in uh, San Francisco, where the woman was killed, and they always blamed the police department, and then they blamed the boyfriend, and then they uh. blamed the father, and then they blamed all these people. And of course, they try to paint her as a very unsavory and character. Unsavory yeah, in the meantime, really that's sleazy. And, and I didn't uh, want to do that with right. Tamara Green because she was a good person. She had three children. And she, no matter what she did at night, she took care of those kids during oh, the yeah, day. Which is, which Give them is birthday great, parties, yeah. and she was a good, Absolutely. good person. Not wholesome, but a good person. That's and and at the bottom of the, you know, heap, I guess, is morally, but uh, she still was good, and she didn't deserve to die. And that's kind of what my book is okay. about. Now, do we know if she had any kind of contact with Kwame Kilpatrick before the the? the mm, party? I don't think so, because they have never. Okay. Kwame texted everything. Oh, he yeah, texted yeah, everything, yeah. and there was never any kind of link to her and him. Right before this, okay. Before, and never even, you know, um, with anybody, that, like with Bernard Kilpatrick or anybody oh, in the okay, family, okay. it didn't seem like there was any link. The only link was uh, Stallworth, I can't remember his first name. He was a uh, legislator at the time, and he had a strip club and it was on Seven Mile, and Kwame used to go there. Oh, okay. And the okay. lawyer that I talked to and different different officers, police officers at the time, said possibly Kwame met her through this strip club. Oh. Because he used to, he would go there, but 
he would never partake in any of those activities because, okay. you know, he was the mayor, but he would have private sure. parties. So whether she showed up at other private parties, they don't know. Uh -huh. But there is some evidence that she danced at the Manoogie. And I had hundreds of people in this book that testified to it but would not go on record because they, wouldn't be, they couldn't be subpoenaed because of Mike Cox. You know, the oh, former see, attorney yeah. general. Sure. He stopped he stopped the investigation into wow. it from happening. I I believe there was a party. I believe she was assaulted. I believe everything, you know, that the, the officers told me, but you can't I'm not you know, I mean I, I, I can't really document it. Right. So it's all in gossip and innuendo at this point. If they wow. come out in court and say it happened and somebody testifies, then then it happened. But there are two witnesses who were at the party but they made them seem unsavory, just like they're of doing course, in court yeah, today. They, yeah, Everybody's crazy, yeah. you yep, know. Of course. So my book is on sale at Amazon.com, and um, I also am doing a book signing at the uh, St. Benedict Catholic Church. Okay. It's a big hall, and it's the four, uh, A.J. O'Neill, who used to have the A.J.'s Music Cafe in Ferndale, is oh, doing right. his stuff out okay. of this hall now, and it's at 47 Chandler. In Ferndale, Michigan, or in um, Highland Park. Okay, excellent. So I'm uh, doing that Saturday from 8 to about 10. I actually did a show at uh, um, when it was uh, called AJ's Cafe. Oh, really? Did like a cabaret kind of thing there. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was one of the last shows that was ever there. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it was a good time. Is, is AJ's Cafe still open? No, he closed That's it down in Ferndale, but he's opened up and it's a hall, I believe, in the bottom of this St. Benedict's Church, and it's oh, not okay. too far down. Um, Woodward near Six Mile on Candler. Oh, all right. Well, we'll look forward um, to that. So and that's Saturday what, what night. What is the oh, Saturday night? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll definitely uh, drop by and yeah, say hi. Yeah, yeah. That'll be fun. Um, well, this is our uh, the last minute of the show. Is, is there anything else you want to plug? Or do you have any oh, other well, projects? No, you're I don't have on, anything or? else. I'm leaving for Florida in a week, so oh, I'm really you're excited. So lucky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice and warm down there. Yeah, I'm getting out of this. And I'll probably, be, I'm going to start <laughs> writing a book on internet dating. Okay. I did a lot of that. We'll I'm going to call it 200 Men and Counting. <laughs> wow. Well, we're going to have to have you back for that one. That sounds yeah, really, uh, I know. Sounds really juicy. Yeah. I know. I've partake in uh, internet dating myself. I don't anymore. I'm done. I don't so. anymore either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about some unsavory people. I have met some uh, some real characters. You one that. gets unsavory. But, you know, I mean, I feel like I was becoming <laughs> a little unsavory. You know, those coffee dates. It began like a job interview that never oh, yeah. ends. Yeah, you know, exactly. a job interview where you could end up naked. <laughs> it's well, like weird. That might be a good thing. But I didn't, of course. <laughs> Well, the book is called Strawberry. Um, it's by uh, Carol T. Garten, and uh, we'd, we'd like to thank you for coming. Oh, uh, this thank is, you. This has been a great show. I know it goes by really fast. It does. But, uh, oh, my God. Can, uh, can we put the website up there? Uh, I'm sure we'll... There we go, weeklyentertainment.com. Want to check us out? We'll have links to all of your stuff as well. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you for joining us, and I hope everyone can make it down to... Uh, AJ's buy to, a book. Yeah, buy a book and uh, she'll <laughs> sign it for you. On my trip to Florida. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, fascinating stuff. And we'll be back next week, folks. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.